Right guys, back on the YouTube sketch. It's been about a year since I did the Walk the Walk series where I did a bit of a video into the life of uh, an average powerlifter and kind of gave everyone an insight about what it takes to compete and stuff. Um, this year a little bit different. Gonna do a bit of a day in the life today. Just get back into it. Um, essentially I've got a lot of check-ins to do. Obviously I'm an online coach, I'm a personal trainer, so give a bit of an insight of what the online coaching process is on my side if you are interested in ever pursuing it yourself. And then today we're going to do a bit of training, we've got some deadlifts, we've got some bench, still doing the powerlifting training. And from last year's video to now, I'm about 20 kilograms lighter. So it's a little bit different, but um, I'm sure you'll uh, suss it out as we go. All right, let's get it. Yeah, I'm going to go straight. Get it. Do you want to get on YouTube? Huh? Do you want to get on the tubes? On the what? On the YouTube? On the tubes, mate. Oh, IG, Snapchat, YouTube, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. You know what I mean? Circle the ones you aren't doing. We'll get on them for free in my video. We'll put a little, it'll scroll, to, it'll go to your face now, and then we'll get a little sure. Ethan, Ethan Sam PT Instagram thing handle. handle. Then it'll go to JT's, and it'll do exact Coach same thing. JT Coach JT handle. Right at the bottom. That's what it's about. You've got to get amongst it. Are you training? Are you training today? This is Will Allen. Tag Will Allen on Instagram. Yeah, Will Allen. Oh. So at the minute, it's like you're trying to sit into it too much. Yeah. If you were, if you were like a if you're a bit more of a dwarf, that'd be like suitable, but the way you're built, it's almost like you, your bum's rising up until you're finding your mid foot and your biting point, and then and then, the, that's, and, and then that's, when you're in your, that's when you're in your strong point. Yeah. So just don't try and have your bum so low. Just get yourself in that position. Just start um, with your hips higher. Yeah, okay, thank you. But no, they look good. Right, so pre-workout meal, we've got some cocoa poppage. 100 grams of cocoa pops, some almond milk, and some whey protein. Cinnamon donut flavor. Training in about half an hour. Usually I knock this back. If I am having this as a pre-workout meal, it digests pretty fast, so knock it back anywhere from half an hour to an hour before. But um, yeah, a lot of people are different. If you are, if you are someone that's um, you know might sit a bit heavier in the stomach, obviously just you know have it like more like an hour or an hour and a half before, um, rather than so close like I am. But yeah, gonna smash this in. Keep working through some check-ins. Um, with the check-in side of things, usually don't actually do them at the gym, but I just feel like at the minute, super busy, don't really have time to be sitting at home and then coming here and you know messing around with traffic. So got here first, then ticking off check-ins and then training today. That's just the way it is. And it's uh, probably going to get even busier soon when the baby comes along. It's like balance, it's balance within a week rather than balance within a day, isn't it? That's, yeah, that's, that's yeah, kind of yeah. what it's that's kind of what it's what it's about. Yeah. But then, by the same token, you could even confuse balance go the other way and go, oh, I'll just take a bit more time here and there and don't appreciate that. To have that balance, you've got to put time somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll find a way, you forget, you wonder where you find time from if you find time. Yeah. If you want to find time. It's like anything, if you want to make anything a priority, you'll find a way to do it. You know, if you, how many people do you know go, oh, I didn't, you know, get time to train yesterday. Well, you've not got time to train yesterday, I'll just prioritise something else. Yeah, it's definitely prioritising, isn't it? Yeah, it's definitely, yeah, 100%. Right, I best actually do some check-ins now. Um, you know, not a bad loss at all. I mean, we've dropped over half a kilo there, so we are moving in the right direction. I would like to see a kilo coming off a week. Um, just remember, this the, this fat loss phase, we don't expect it to last forever. We only anticipate it lasting another, you know, six weeks maximum. So with client check-ins, it's essentially two phases to it. So what I'll do is, clients will we use an app called True Coach. Basically, all the training I upload all of it onto there for the client, and then also they get. So if you show, you, I'll just show you this one as like an example. This client's on uh, just he's on three sessions a week, one full body and two uh, an upper and a lower. So as you can see here, Monday we've got full body, Wednesday upper, and then on a Friday they've got the check-in form to fill out, and then they've also got the lower body session as well. So these videos for all the exercises. This one just so happens to be me. We have videos of me explaining essentially what I'm looking for, even the ones where it seems quite self-explanatory because, you know, obviously we want to make sure we're getting the answers right. Um, and that's, you know, that's essentially the true coach side of things. So that's training and checking. We have name at the top. Allow the phone, it's a little bit smashed up. So we have name at the top, body weight on the side, we have a plan of attack, 
focus for the week or changes to be made. We have like macros, then we have an example day of eating, steps, supplements, and then cardio goal if, if we have one of them as well. And what I'll do is, once a week, every week, we'll do the check-in, and then if ch any changes need to be made from me, I'll then make them changes, and then we can make sure the client's moving in the right direction. And obviously, if they need to just adhere to the plan better, or they're struggling with something and we need to change it because of that, we can obviously do that just to make sure we're making progress every single week. And that's basically the check-in process. Couple of check-ins boxed off. Obviously, this is less than ideal. Um, usually, I like to have just a, a lot of amount of time to get all my check-ins done on a Friday, but today's been a little busier than normal. Had a couple of things in the diary which I don't usually have and had a couple more one-to-one -one sessions this morning. But this is just me being transparent of what it's like being an online coach, personal trainer, and also working towards your own training goals as well and trying to balance family life. So. It's just about to go three o'clock. I've got my mate Sam Hurst meeting me here, mate and client Sam meeting me here at three o'clock to do some training. We've got deadlift and bench. I've just done a couple check-ins, gonna wrap that up, train, get all that out of the way, cardio, stretch, get home, showered, finish off my check-ins, do some client payments, another couple bits, bits of marketing, and then uh, chill out with the fam before I get off to the lakes tomorrow. Righty-roo. So like I said, today we've got some deadlifts, we've got some uh, bench. And then we've got a couple of accessories. At the minute, the only intra workout I have is an electrolyte dissolvent. Uh, supplements wise, outside of that, do creatine daily. Um, a lot of people, they'll do creatine in their intra workout and then they'll forget to take it on, say, the rest days. But it's, um, it's basically not really effective that way. It's a, it's a saturation supplement, so you've got to take it daily. So I just get in the habit of taking it in the morning with my hurts. But yeah, should be good. I'm um, going to get myself a white monster. You are what you drink, a bit of pre-workout, and then uh, we'll see where Sam is and get stuck into some dead. Right, so at the unit, we used to have a normal fridge, and uh, we used to get staff discount, it'd be 100% off um, on any day ending in wine. You can ask Ben Bamford about that. Uh, but now, inflation, monsters are two quid out of this fancy machine, so I haven't actually used it yet. Um, I'm gonna try and get myself a monster. Try a different card, fantastic. Delicious. Right, this week is actually week one of a four week block. All my training at the minute is in four week blocks. It's how I like to do my clients training as well for powerlifting. Um, basically week one is an easy week, so we're not going too crazy. Caffeine content of one of these bad boys is about 150 milligrams. And performance wise, caffeine to body weight, you're wanting three to four milligrams per kilogram of body weight. So uh, this is, you know, unless I weighed, so the old quick maths, unless I weighed like, I don't know, 30, 30 kilograms, this wouldn't be super high. Or, you know, only if I weighed 40 kilograms, so this wouldn't, this, this would be high. So um, yeah, pretty low on the caffeine content this week. As the weeks progress, they get harder with the training. I'll up the caffeine a bit more. Um, but yeah, this is more just because I could have done with a little bit more sleep last night. That's why he's got his favorite top on. Even though, even though he knows it's too slimy for bench. For the last fucking seven sessions, maybe even 10, Sam's come with one of his new tops. Because he's, to be fair to him, he's lost a lot of weight, but he come, comes in these tops and they're like a slip and slide. He'll put them on and then he'll say, ah, oh, they're way too slippery on the bench press. I need to wear a cotton t-shirt next week. And then obviously he wakes up in the morning, does the most muscular in the mirror after his body weight goes down again. And comes in in a fucking tight, fucking tight green top again. I mean, he looks great. But we'll just see if he complains about the slipping slide on bench later. If you ever come and train at the unit fitness and you want to use the powerlifting plates, you've just got to ask me or Job Murphy. Another fast track way to be able to use them is no, it's not by just taking them without asking, it's by becoming a client of mine or Job's, Mur or Job's Murphy's. <laughs> but you're not taking them, yeah, Job's Murphy's, that's his name now. Oh, yeah, baby. If you're a young lifter, or you've never had any sort of like injury before, and you don't warm up for at least, you know, a few minutes, fucking start. <laughs> Trust me. Um, I used to not warm up at all, and uh, I paid the price. You've probably heard it before, but it's legit. 
you don't want to start warming up when you have to, do it before you have to do it. And uh, your performance will be better, you'll lift more weight, probably have more consistent sessions, and you won't spacky yourself, which is always great. So Sam here, he follows a flexible, he's one of my best mate, but also one of my weight loss clients and my powerlifting clients. He's, uh, he's lost about six stone in body weight, maybe a bit more now. And he uses a flexible dieting approach, so I'd actually tell him exactly what to eat. I give him a calorie goal, a protein goal. I give him an example day of eating, but ultimately it's up to him what he eats. And for him, it works really well because it's flexible. Um, like today, he's just eating some mad stuff, but it's worked in his routine. He's still making progress in the gym and the body weight's coming down as well. So if it works, it's all good. Oh, swearing, I'd be, I'd be fucked, yeah. I'll tell you what, I've made a mistake though, JT. I've done that much shit talking, I forgot to take a pre-workout shit. It's oh, like, now I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's going to be a, there's going to be a, a, at least a shark coming out during one of these sets. So today, we've got single RP6 on deadlifts. Um, Probably go on the side of caution with that. I usually deadlift on a Saturday and have a day's rest. This week I haven't because I'm off away tomorrow. Um, so I'm probably going to go quite conservative, quite light, go two or five kilos, see how it feels. Bench press, similar type of thing. First week of block as well. So at this stage in the game, first week of your block, it's all about getting rid of fatigue. It's not about you know trying to show people how strong you are. It's about essentially just getting some work in, getting some technique in, and uh, building upon that in the subsequent weeks. Whoever came to the unit and left this uh, beautiful sheep's testicle for me to use, um, I thank you very much. Please come forwards, as I will reward you with two sheep's testicles, as I do feel a little bit bad for using the lost property chart. Delicious. Nice. Nice. That's how I want it to move, first week at block. Happy six. In my head, I told myself I was doing it for 10 reps. <laughs> Let's go. Hips through. Clean. Nice. Right, back offs. Nice. Nice and fast. Speedy. Like if you ever program top singles, you've got to remember that top singles there to serve a few purposes. Um, but your back off work, you know, which I know it's called back off work and people almost think of it as like secondary, like not as important, but the thing that's actually gonna make you stronger is doing the reps and sets. That top singles there for like, just comp specificity. It's, it's there to just basically drill skill and to make your back off work, one, be technically better, and two, feel feel lighter because you're more primed with a heavier load. Um, but yeah, don't neglect your back off work. Fucking get your focus in, get your head right. Treat it with respect and um, give it some. Otherwise, you won't get as strong as you can. Nice. Nice. Positioning B. You know like how it didn't have to hitch at all? Because it's not just your quads, it's also the your technique. Yeah. Like that first one, it was like, like, oh my God, it like a different lifter. I mean, it was like perfect fucking technique and it just fucking flew. Yeah. But very easy. I think part of that is because of you losing weight, so your start position's probably improving. Yeah. But part of that's also you just getting stronger and your technique being better. Part two, we're both, we're both about combined loss since the last time we did a YouTube video, it's about four and a half stern. It's added. Now we just need to get strong. <laughs> and to make it actually, because the CJ Summers fat loss body transformations, you know, we're smashing it there. Now he just makes our summer strength. The boys are just representing actually fucking lifting some weight, so that's the focus now. I, 
just went more into that midfoot thing even more on that set and it felt even better. <laughs> why, don't, why would you be bent ever? Oh. That's right. I ain't heard that phrase before, that's why. That, um, that thing that you did in there, I used to do that. What? And it's not good. I used to do it all, I used to do it all the time. I used what? to usually do it when I was like getting cocky with reps. What? Where you, where you, you, get, you get the um, stretch reflex out your hamstrings, which obviously benefits your lift straight away. Yeah. But when, instead of doing it straight away, you go, stretch reflex, get in position, and then go, you know, having too long in that position then at bottom. Oh, right. That, the whole idea of this is to get a, and what I mean by that is, you're on a bench press where you go down and then come back up. Or a squat, you go down and then come back up. That's what makes it easier than your first rep at deadlift. We do this, one, to like create space and get into a better position, but two, you get elastic energy in your hamstrings and your ass. So then you come back into position, you take slack out, come in and wedge, and wedge in straight away and it feels easier. Does that make sense? Yeah, So rather than, yeah, you kind of like got your stretch reflex and you went, I'm thinking about them. Got yeah. Go yeah. Ne yeah. Just fucking. Just. Don't do it. <laughs> right. Bench next. We've just got literally a double RP6. Uh, the l beginning of the last block, I started a double RP6 on bench at like 120 kilos. Um, probably just gonna go 122.5. I mean, the thing that I've been uh, bad for in the past. And it's what's led to like injuries, even when I'm like quite far into lifting, years into it, is overestimating what I can do in the short term and underestimating what I can do in the long term. I'm always trying to like up the last block by five kilos or something. But at the end of the day, if I upped my bench press two and a half kilos every month, you know, 10 months in, that's 25 kilos, that's ridiculous. So, um, yeah, small steps. And you'd rather have it go too light and make it move super easy, and the next week have more, rather than grinding some shit out and fucking your shit up and, you know, not making progress. How's training going this week? What's the current? What's the, oh, right. Okay. Is this like the most handsome man in the gym competition? Some of strength athlete Tom Parker checking in. Tom Parker. 101 yeah, yeah. kilos of pure Yorkshire beef. Something like that. Ready to do some squats and bench. Probably. Yeah. Fantastic. It's not often anything else. Fantastic. A little bit of myth busting for you. Arching on the bench press is not bad for you. It actually saves your shoulders and allows you to lift more weight. Both of which are really cool things. Should probably explain that a little bit more, shouldn't I? If you want to get explain, if you want me to explain it more, you have to message me. But essentially, arching your back on the bench press is not an inherently bad thing. Press. Rack. Nice man. Right, so double this, Sam. Double Two reps, so I'll have commands, yeah? <laughs> Got the arch better then. Turned up for that one. Nice one. That felt lighter than 120. I actually did 120, I was thinking, bear mad if I've got to do this for a double, because what I did last block. <laughs> Start. Press. 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 There we go. Press. Just ten, just ten reds. That's three reds from the judges, and then like everyone that watches the video on Instagram that puts red light, red light. <laughs> For those that are um, sh shut up. For those that are unfamiliar. In a powerlifting competition, you have three judges. They give you a white light if they think you've done the lift to the correct standard. They give you a red light if they think you've done a, you know, incorrect lift or you haven't done it to the standard or you've missed it. Uh, so if you get three red lights, it means your lift was shit. Hence, 
you know, the three red lights coming. Awesome. Right, that's a wrap up of the comeback YouTube video. If you want to see anything from us, drop it in the comment section, drop me a message. If you're interested in online coaching or one to one training or anything like that, or you just want to message me about your own training, any tips, have a conversation, drop me a message on Instagram, which will be just here. Cheers, guys.